I just want to ask about the potential impact on coronavirus because you do have a lot from your uh, Johann Svedrup field and um, going to China. Are you concerned about a drop off in oil demand as a result of coronavirus? Yeah, that's correct. Quite a quite of our crude from Johann Svedrup in particular mm. goes to China. I think I think in the short term there may be uh, some issue with the with the the, the the demand in terms of oil, but I think in the in the long term I don't see things changing fundamentally. So it's something we're watching. We have to see also how things are evolving with this uh, corona crisis. But uh, I would say in perhaps a short-term impact, but in the, long, in the long run, I don't think so. So at the moment, you're watching, but have you had conversations with your customers about it, or are you re-evaluating markets where you, where you would export to based on any shifts because yeah. of a drop in demand? Well, we're, not, we, you know, we're almost in a daily conversation with our different uh, traders, mm. and, uh, but so far we don't, we don't see it. We, we, we've been able to shape and export oil uh, as for the past. China is not only the only market, but it's, also, it's obviously something we're monitoring very closely. But uh, as I said, right now is it's more uh, watch and see than than you know having a, a really impact mm -hmm. what about the oil price reaction um, do you expect a significant drop off in prices from here mm -hmm. Well, we've seen we've seen quite a yeah. quite a drop uh, in the last few days. Of exactly. course, so people are concerned, and and uh, it uh, you know the demand could in the short term uh, reduce, and hence the price has has reduced. I believe I believe today we've seen now uh, uh, some some recovery based on some of the news. So I think it's uh, it's really we have to just monitor, and um, and it may have a short term impact. But I think, as I said, in the long term, I I don't think the fundamental will change. Sure. Let's talk about Johann Svedrup then. Um, do you expect it to reach production plateau before the summer? Yeah, we, we're guiding the summer for uh, to reaching plateau. Of course, uh, to reach plateau, we will need uh, two extra wells. We, we're drilling our, our, um, our first of the two remaining wells to reach plateau. So we'll have to see how the performance of the drilling are going. Uh, right now, we maintain the summer, but of course, uh, if performance uh, are good, we, there, is, there is an opportunity to, 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 do, to do a little bit better. Yeah. All right, so possibly below, before the There's summer. There's a possibility, then. but we'll have to see how, how drill is, uh, the drilling is performing. Yeah, um, what about um, phase to then what's the status of that is there potential for an early startup like we saw from phase one last year yeah phase one as you said was a, a great success it came a month earlier than I anticipated phase two is going really well we're very mm -hmm. pleased with the progress uh, so far we're maintaining um, end of 2022 for first oil uh, it's early days now to 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 make further comments but it's uh, overall we're very pleased with the progress and, and, and it's, uh, the project is going very well yeah and um, talking about phase one will you be able to raise the reserves estimate for the field uh, yeah it's, um, it's a bit, again um, I think we have a lot of expectation on Jan's and it's been, um, the, the whole field has been an absolutely fantastic journey so far. Mm. I think we have to now to see the, the, the productivity from the wells and probably we need a, a, another year of production or so. Uh, and then we can re reassess the situations. But uh, of course, there is, there is a sentiment that, uh, that there is quite a lot of growth potential in terms of reserves on Jan's Fedro, but it's, it's early days. Okay. In terms of something that has perhaps been a little bit more disappointing, it's the exploration um, results in the Barents Sea. Is this year going to be make or break for Barents? You know, the exploration uh, game, it's, uh, it's a long-term game. Mm. Uh, I think we, we still maintain that the, the Barents has got a lot of potential. We, 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 you know, quite significant fields have been discovered. Uh, Katzberg, one of where it's discovered by Equinor, it's half a billion barrels of oil, and there are other fields. So, so there's plenty um, in the Barents. But it's true, we haven't discovered yet the, the key, the, the real key and the, and the secret of the Barents. But I, I think it will take a bit of time. This year, we're going to be very active. We're going to be drilling uh, four wells in the Barents, and Equinor will do also uh, uh, will be also very active so it, it is an important year but but I think uh, it's not a make or break a year I think it will it will take a bit of time because the area is so large and and, and the activity are actually relatively small mm, so drilling four wells in the Barents this year but if the kind of uh, muted exploration trend continues mm. and you're not actually able to grow substantially yeah. in any way I understand it's a, a long-term gain but will you be more active on the M&A front yeah, organic growth is the main strategy of the okay. company, and that's what has created a lot of value to, to shareholders. We still strongly believe on the potential on the um, on the NCS, the Norwegian Continental Shelf. But of course, when it comes to M&A, it will be, I would say, more opportunistic. If the right deal comes, yeah, definitely we will be interesting, and that will be a, a, a catalyst to the, the organic growth, I would say. Yeah, um, you recently announced a decarbonisation strategy to become carbon mm -hmm. neutral by 2030. Yeah. Do you expect, therefore, the oil-weighted portfolio mix to shift in the near term as part of that decarbonisation strategy? 
No, I think our strategy fundamentally doesn't change. I think the decarbonisation strategy really for us started back in 2010 is when we started to make the first uh, decision to to prepare uh, one of our platforms called Edva Greek for electrification. And I think the most important part of the, the um, decarbonization for us is the fact that we, we go ahead, 90% uh, of our assets will be electrified, reducing dramatically the emission of uh, CO2 uh, per, per barrel produced, actually probably one of the lowest in the world. And that allows us to be very competitive, hence then we explicitly uh, gave more guidance in terms of how we're going to get to carbon neutrality by 2030. But it's very much driven by the electrification of the platforms. But fundamentally, your strategy will not change. Um, you're saying the strategy won't change. You've also said that the strategy is still organic growth. But in mm -hmm. this uh, decarbonisation effort, yes. could that be an area of M&A potential for you? In terms of, uh, yeah, I, I think organic growth actually fits very well with the decarbonisation strategy oh, okay. because you, 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 you drill new prospects so you can apply new technologies and so it allows you to really use the state of the art technology and hence being very competitive in the marketplace not only in terms of growth but also in terms of uh, efficiency and that's what we've shown uh, today I mean we, we have uh, today probably one of the lowest uh, CO2 emissions per barrel produced for offshore and we want to continue to be competitive on that front.